All right, so we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Leah Valletta. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the GTA in the Teaching and Learning Programs Department. So in our department, we teach sessions like this, and we are, in general, just here to help students in whatever way we can. Um, so yeah, I'll let Brittany go ahead and introduce herself. Hey, everyone. I'm Brittany Norwood. I also use she, her pronouns. And I'm one of the Commons librarians. So I do work with the um, Learning Commons and with Public Services. So I do a lot of help with research assistance. Um, I do a lot of work with accounts, so on and so forth. Sometimes you'll see me at the front desk. Sometimes I'm the person who answers um, your chats that you send in. Awesome. So just real quick, what we're gonna do today, we're going to talk about the physical library space, we're going to talk about the virtual library space and then we're going to go over some library policies and just generally how to uh, find an article or a book in our system. And here are just our learning outcomes. Um, we just hope that you can be more comfortable using the library in general, um, finding materials with OneSearch, becoming acquainted with policies like what to do if we don't have what you're looking for, that sort of thing, and where to find help when you need it. All right, so I am going to switch over here to the library website. Can everybody see the library website here? Okay, awesome. So first off, we just wanted to point out um, that there is more than one library here at UTK. Um, Hodges is the main library that you might be familiar with. We've got our hours listed right over here. Um, but besides Hodges, there's also Pendergrass, which is the Ag Vet Library, um, but it is open for all students. It's over on the Ag campus. Then there's the Divine Music Library, which is in the Haslam Music Building, so kind of a, a similar thing there. And then we've also got um, the studio special collections, and we've got Hoskins listed here too. So these are actually located, um, well, Hoskins is a storage space where we keep other materials. So if you ever see um, something you're looking for showing up as in Hoskins, it's in storage and it might take a couple days to access, but that is part of the libraries. Um, the studio is in Hodges on the second floor. It's a place where you can go to work on multimedia projects. They've got a bunch of equipment for rent there, um, a bunch of computers with different software on them that they can use. So. Basically, if you're trying to do a podcast, a video, anything that you would need multimedia software for, that's a great place to go. And then we've also got special collections, which is where the library houses its archival collections. So it's sort of like a mini library museum where we store all of our older records and collections. So again, that's housed in the main library at Hodges. Um, something else I wanna draw your attention to, especially this semester, given that we have um, some space restraints is just these little uh, links up top here. So if you wanted to see spaces that we have available in the physical library where you might be able to study, you can just click on this link here and it'll give you a lot of information about the various spaces with pictures and with filters. So if you're looking for somewhere where you can uh, work on a project with a friend, you can filter that here and then you should be able to find the right space for you. And then if you want to reserve a room specifically, like have it booked off for you and maybe a couple other people, um, there has been additional restrictions on who can, how many people can use the rooms because of uh, the pandemic. But if you wanna reserve a room, you can just click this link here and it will bring you to this page where you can find whatever room you'd like. Again, they've got all this information on each of the rooms and then it'll give you um, options for when you want to reserve it. Cool. And I believe, Brittany, correct me if they're not doing this this semester, but I believe that there's also space on the, um, second floor across from Starbucks where they're doing space for online classes. Is that still there this semester? That is correct. Cool. So we yeah, there's a pretty much transfer that one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say it's been set up in the past where if you have a mask and headphones, you can just go there and uh, do your online classes. That's not right. 
Yeah, that's right. And you can also pretty much do that on any floor that's not a quiet floor. And you can pretty much find that out by um, when you step out the elevator, there'll be signage telling you whether or not it's a quiet floor or not. So as long as you don't see that and you have your headphones and your mask, then you can take your classes anywhere. Awesome. And a little trick Amber taught me is that all of the floors that start with F are quiet floors. So first, fourth, and fifth. I think that's right. And awesome. So yeah, extra space to take online classes across from the Starbucks. And so now we're just going to show you real quick how to use OneSearch. And OneSearch is sort of our tool um, for searching the largest uh, percentage of what we have available at the library. So it's sort of the best place to go when you're just starting out with your research and you kind of want to just see what's out there for your topic. Um, if you see this search bar here, right on the library homepage, when you're searching in there, what you're searching is OneSearch. Um, so it does have most of the materials that you have access to in the library, not all of them, but most of them for getting started. Um, so we do have a whole separate workshop on finding secondary sources and another on using subject specific databases. So if you want to go more in depth into this process, definitely check out those workshops. This is going to be just like a quick overview of unit using, excuse me, one search. Um, so if we want to research a topic, we'll go here and I'm going to use my colleague's example because I like it so much with peanut butter. Putting it in quotes. Um, just helps keep those two words together. So even though the search bar kind of looks like Google, you have to use keyword searches with it. You can't just type in um, a whole question like you would be able to on Google. So if you're going to use peanut butter as your keywords, you wanna put it in quotes just to make sure that it doesn't search peanut and butter separately and you only get results that have peanut and butter right next to each other together. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. and it'll think for a minute. And I'm not signed in right now, but if it gives you this, it's always better to sign in while you're doing this, then you have this like a little more options to um, save various searches and that sort of thing. But for now, um, we can see that we have 68,000 results, uh, which is a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I'm just going to show you how you can filter down your results to get a little bit more specific and find exactly what you're looking for. So down here on the left, you'll see that we have all of these filters. And if you've ever done any online shopping, they will look familiar to you. Um, they function basically in that same way where um, if you just want a peer reviewed journal, you hit this button, you'll hit apply filters, and um, it'll only give you options that it uh, tags as peer reviewed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click format and I'm gonna hit articles in case I wanna find an article and hit apply filters. And so say I'm like, wow, this one's perfect, peanut butter, and I click on it. In order to access this article, you're going to have to click on one other thing for sure, maybe a couple other things, but the best way to do it is if it says um, download PDF up here, you can just click that. It might not say that, it might just say online access. So if you click that and you come here to where you can find this article in our databases online, and then you can just click one of these, it might ask you for your net ID and password, um, and it might have you click yet another link. Um, so when looking for articles, I think it's helpful to always just look for that little orange T and when you click on that, it'll take you um, to the next place where the article can be located. Again, I know that that's sort of a lot and it can be a little bit confusing, but this is just sort of the basics that you wanna, if you wanna view the article online, you just need to click through either of these options down here or just the download PDF right up here if you've got that option for that particular article. So hopefully that makes sense. And if we want to find a physical book, say, about peanut butter, we're just going to reset our filters and that'll bring us back to our complete search here. And then we are going to go back down to format here and we're going to hit books in print and apply our filters again. 
And then we're gonna say, all right, perfect. We found exactly what we need. And we'll click on this, say we're doing a um, project on peanut allergies. This would be a great book to have. Um, so I'm actually going to pass it over off to Brittany and she's going to explain to you guys a little bit more about this Map It feature um, and how it works and a couple pro tips for using it. And then she's also going to go on and tell us a little bit more about the library policies. Sounds good, thank you, Leah. Um, would you mind going ahead and pressing Map It for all of us? Perfect, thank you. So um, something that is good to know about this Map It feature is it is supposed to show you pretty much exactly where in the library your um, book that you're looking for is supposed to be. So as you can see on here, it's showing that um, it's supposed to be on the third floor. And if you scroll down a little bit, Leah, it'll show you where on the third floor it is supposed to be. It's, it's giving me a hard time scrolling while oh. I'm in. Um, let me see if it'll work with another book real quick. There we go. Yes, there we go. So as you can see, this one is on the sixth floor. It tells you um, exactly where you'll be able to find it. Coming off the elevators is a pretty good um, reference point to determine where on the floor it's supposed to be. And if you were to print this out, it would also tell you um, the item's call number and what um, the shelving row it, it is supposed to be on. But something to notice is, um, well, what just happened to Leah is that sometimes the Map It feature does glitch. So if that happens, then um, it could be the case that you just need to try using a different browser. Maybe you just need to reload the page. And this is also something that's particularly prone to happening on cell phones. But if you are in the library and you're having this sort of issue, come up to the public services desk, tell us what book you're looking for, and we'll print out the map for you. It typically works really well on our computers. So we don't have that sort of issue too often. Another thing that you need to consider is while these are maps are typically really accurate, there have been cases where people have gone up and used the maps and it turns out they're slightly off for some reason. If that happens, you go up and you start looking for your book and you can't find it on that shelf it's supposed to be on, try looking on the adjacent shelves because sometimes it's just the fact that when people started reshelving books and moving them around, that they ended up just somewhere slightly different, maybe one or two shelves removed from where the map shows you. And if you still can't find it, come down to us and we will guide you through the steps to either help you find it or to get somebody to go look for it for you. And now I'm gonna start gonna go over policies if Leah's ready for me to do that. I gotcha, we'll pull up our slides again. Sounds perfect. So I'm gonna go briefly over some of these policies and I will actually share my screen at the end and show you how you can find these things on the library website. So first of all, I thought you guys might wanna know how you guys can check out books and how long you can keep them. So check out a book, you just need to bring it to the public services desk Make sure you have either your vol card on you or some sort of photo ID and you know your net ID. So that's the first part of your UTK email address. From there, you hand the book over to us. We'll put it on your account and we'll tell you when it's due. If it's the case that you have requested a book and put it on hold, you just need to come up to us. Um, tell us that you have something on the hold shelf for you. Show us that your card and we'll go grab the book and take care of the rest for you. So in terms of how long you can keep it, um, as long as you maintain undergraduate status, then you have four weeks with the book and you can renew it for um, a maximum of 16 weeks. Now this differs according to the material. So for DVDs, you have like three days with them. And I'll show you how you can, where you can find all this information. And if you um, end up gaining like special undergraduate status, then the amount of time that you have with some books extends. And once again, I'll show you at the end how you can find those policies. 
Now there's a question about what if somebody has a book that you need or you have a book that somebody else ends up needing. When that happens, you can um, request the book and it'll send an email out to the person who has it telling them that the amount of time that they have with their book has been um, shortened to 10 days. That's how long they have to turn it in. Once they turn it in, we'll put it on the hold gel for you and we'll email you when it's ready. Now, if it's the case that this ever happens to one of your books, then you will be the one receiving that email. It'll tell you when your items are now due. And if it ends up being the case that you still need that book, then you can typically go through interlibrary services and let them know that we only have one copy, or it could also be the case that the copy you need is missing. Not really too much to have to do with somebody recalling the book you need, but sometimes that happens. And then they will get it for you from another library. And I'll go over how exactly you can do that as well. So what happens if our libraries don't have the book or life article you need? Well, in this case, you're also once again wanting to go through interlibrary services. And at this point, I'm going to share my own screen and show you how you can do this. Okay, so if it ends up being the case that you're needing um, a book or article that our libraries don't have, then what you can do is when you go to the library's homepage, scroll down to where it shows um, specialty services and click on interlibrary services. So from here, it'll bring you to a page that talks about um, different ILS policies, you know, things that they can and can't grab for you. So for example, if it's a textbook for a class, ILS won't get it for you. But if it's a book that you're using for a project, then they will certainly do their best if we don't have it and it's not missing. So what you can do from here is you would go click on this where it says um, Iliad login. So the first time you do this, it'll ask you for a bunch of demographic information. That's basically so they know um, how they can contact you, let you know about the status of your request and whether or not they were able to fulfill it. And if you're asking for an article to be delivered electronically to you, then that is where they will send you the information that, hey, um, you can click on this link, it'll take you to ILS and you can download your article. So once you've finished all that, you're able to start placing requests. If you're needing something that's a scan, of an item, so maybe I'm a chapter of a book that we don't have or an article that isn't in our, one of our databases, all you can do is go to request an article or copy and make sure that you fill out everything on the screen with a red asterisk. But if you can fill out some of these other places like article author or ISBN, then that can definitely help speed up the process. So if you're needing something that's like a physical copy of something, so a book, maybe a musical score or a map or a CD, then you would go to request a loan. Once again, make sure you're filling in everything with a red asterisk and also try to fill in some of the other information if at all possible. If it's um, a book, like I mentioned earlier, where we had it, but somebody else had to, um, somebody else recalled it from you, then under your notes field, you can put a note in like, hey, um, we need, I need this book, but somebody else has recalled it from me. We only have one copy. Um, can you help me out here? And they will do what they can to help you out. It could also be the case that maybe we had a copy of the book and it's gone missing. You could note that here as well. Because the thing is, is that ILS won't um, they won't honor requests if we have the material. So you need to make sure that you let them know that you can't access it for some reason or another. And something that's both on request an article or copy and request a loan that's important to note is this section right here that says, will you accept the item in a language other than English? So it's automatically set to no. Um, that's because sometimes when you are going through a database, you'll find a record for an item that seems perfect. 
but the record is the only thing that's been translated. The actual item itself may be in another language. So for example, um, once when I was working with somebody, as, when I was an undergraduate, they had requested an item. The information they found about the title and everything was in English, but when they got the book in, it was in Tibetan. So they could not use it. Um, that's where this comes in handy, because it could be that you are very fluent in a language and you feel super comfortable reading it in that. And so you can say, yeah, um, I'm really great at reading French. So if that's what this language is originally, that's what this article is originally in, then yeah, I can do that. But if you're not comfortable with that, then you wanna make sure that that's set to no. So that is an overview of Iliad. And so now I'm gonna show you just generally where you can go to find some of these other policies. So if you ever wonder about loan periods, things like that, you just have to scroll down, find information for undergraduates, click on that, and it'll bring you to a page with a bunch of different links to helpful information. To find out how long you can keep different items, you just have to go to this loan period section, and it'll give you that basic overview. So as you can see, you have a four-week loan period generally for books, and you can see how many times you can renew them. You can also look and see um, what you have already checked out by going to this My Account button up here. And it will tell you everything that you have checked out, anything that you've requested, any fines you have on your account, stuff like that. And say that you have something that you really need to renew, but you aren't able to come in in person just yet. You can try to go on here and select what you need to do and select the Renew button, or you can select specific ones and do Renew Selected. And so now I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can request a book. So say it's one of those that you went up in the shelves looking for, but you weren't able to find it. Or maybe you're researching really late at night and you found a book that looks awesome, but you don't wanna to go to the library right now and you don't know if you'll remember it later on. Something you can do is place a request for the item. So Library Express will go up, they will look for it, they'll pull the book for you and they'll put it on the hold shelf with your name on it. That is if they can find it, which typically isn't much of an issue. So say I'm really needing this book about engineering. I could select that. And as long as I'm signed into my account, I'll see a physical item request option and a PDF scan. So if I'm needing the entire book or more than one chapter, then I need to go with physical, the physical item. You can select that select Hodges Library as your pickup location, and then just press in request. But say I'm only needing one chapter of it, or maybe this is a bound journal, and I only need one article of it. From there, I would go to PD I could go to PDF scan, type in exactly the information that I'm needing, and then send the request. It's important to note though that for this, you can um, do this for one section, so a chapter or an article, per book for 10 different books. And you can do that once each day. So that's like for 10 different items your first day, you can select one thing from them. It's recommended though that if you're needing like five chapters of a book, just request the entire book, if at all possible. And if you're in a position where you maybe can't because you're a distance ed student for some reason, then we'll work with you. And also, it's important to know whenever the books are in, you'll get that email and you'll know when you'll be able to pick up your items. And finally, I'm going to go over really quickly the um, research assistance. So say you have a question about your account or um, you're starting to work on a project and you don't know where to go from where you are or you don't know how to get started or you're having really trouble, a lot of trouble accessing an article. There is an option on the library's um, homepage right here that says chat with us. If you click on that, enter in your name, your contact information, um, all this different information, and then type in your question and then start chat, then one of us who is currently working the research assistance desk will respond to your question and we'll do our best to help you out. We might be asking you a lot of questions in return, just so you know, because we wanna make sure that we're getting you the best information possible. And if you just tell us um, we're needing peer-reviewed articles in biomedical engineering, well, there's a lot of 
different sections to biomedical engineering. So we're going to try and narrow it down to get things more and more specific. So if we start asking you a lot of questions, that's why. It's just to make sure that we can help you out as best we can. But yeah, so Leah, if you are ready to take it back over, I'm good to go. All right, sounds good. If you wanna, yep, perfect. We'll just finish up here. All right, so thank you guys for coming. We are almost to the end of the presentation part. We will be here for the next 30 minutes answering any questions that you might have. Oh, didn't start my video, just a disembodied voice. Um, so definitely feel free to stick around, ask us whatever you want. If you wanna try finding an article, try finding a book, whatever you wanna do, we will be here to help. Um, we do ask that you take our little um, survey. It's only three questions. Um, we've got the tiny link here. I think Carissa should throw it in the chat for us. And if you guys can just complete that survey, let us know um, what you liked about our session, what you didn't like. That's just super helpful for us going forward. Um, just wanted to plug a couple extra things. Next week's workshop is Nowhere to Go, Secondary Sources. So like I said, that'll just get a little bit more in depth about finding articles and other types of secondary sources using the library's um, extensive databases. And then I also just wanted to plug this game that our colleague made um, using Twine. It's super fun and it's a really great additional, um, and a, just a great ad addition to this workshop because it would really help you get acquainted to the libraries. Um, it kind of meets you where you're at. You can take a couple different paths. It's really fun. Um, so just wanted to plug that as well. We'll also throw a link to that in the chat. And I am going to um, stop sharing my screen here. Actually, I'll leave it up for another couple of minutes and we will go ahead and stop the recording.